simple particles, synthesizing things. If you're in the laboratory with synthesis, you're you're um, taking two elements together and merging them together. Uh, synthesis to create something. Uh, induction. It has the same meaning. It's just different terminology. So induction is a form of logic where some new knowledge is created. New knowledge is created. Induction, no new knowledge is created. It's just that the existing terms are clarified. Now, one way to uh, remember about uh, or understand inductive logic is it, it's simply a way of saying jumping to conclusions. Um, that you that you see phenomena, you gather sense data or empirical data, and you draw a conclusion from from that, which may or may not be valid. A deductive conclusion is always valid. An inductive conclusion uh, is often very wrong, uh, and according to Hume, at least, is always wrong. Um, other uh, philosophers, uh, a more settled view would be that inductive conclusions are unreliable and that you need to um, add a caveat, uh, a warning that you have committed induction when you've done so with some sort of assessment of how reliable your um, inductive conclusion is. Um, let me try and be a bit clearer about that. Uh, by going over uh, the terminology again for a bit. I'm going to go over the terminology even at the risk of repetition because I think it helps to build up your vocabulary and uh, and to, to use these terms. So we're talking now about a mental process called induction. Um, it can also be called synthetic logic or synthetic reasoning or inductive reasoning. Synthetic or inductive are the adjectives which qualify the nouns logic and reason. So these terms are used interchangeably. The differences are, are somewhat subtle or, or it's just a matter of fashion. Now there's a further term from science and the analysis of statistical information uh, which we also need to use, and this is inference. Inference. So, where a conclusion is reached after subjecting data to a process of inductive reasoning, um, the result of that we call inference or statistical inference. I'm going to clarify this by giving concrete examples in a moment. An example of scientific inference would be a truth statement about a causal link between smoking and cancer. So let's go through the whole process of inference. First of all, you, you gather data or you simply notice or you perceive, but actually it's done scientifically, huge of these survey studies go on for a very long time. So one way or another, you have gathered this data showing that far more people who smoke get lung cancer than those who don't. Now, you can't immediately say that there's a causal link there. You would say you could never say there was a causal link. But uh, nobody could say there was a causal link there. At that point, it would just be jumping to conclusions. It would be just a hunch or an intuition. Uh, it's very hard to prove a link uh, with uh, induction and for inference. Uh, hard to prove it for sure. You can, you can prove some things up to levels of 99% certainty. 100% certainty in causality, nobody would think that was possible. No scientist would think that was possible. It's hard to prove a link, even like the one between smoking and cancer, or even where it seems even more blindingly obvious to common sense. David Hume, though, would say it's impossible to prove the causal link between smoking and cancer or anything else. Um, you couldn't prove it. Uh, you certainly couldn't perceive a link. Uh, but you could report the fact, uh, as it were, without comment. 
that um, all these people smoked and they all got cancer. And all these other people didn't smoke and far less of them got cancer or none of them got cancer. But drawing the conclusion, the inference by means of induction, the Hume is simply not something that can be done. So let me continue. What we can use, though, in this smoking example is inductive reasoning or synthetic logic, however you want to, to call it. And we can produce a statistical inference saying we are 99% sure or 87% sure, whatever it is, um, using uh, a branch of mathematics called probability theory to uh, work out the probability that smoking causes cancer. Now, on the sides of packets of cigarettes, it simply asserts boldly, smoking kills. That is not a justified inference from the, um, the data, that if you smoke, it will certainly kill you. Apart from anything, it's not the case. Many people smoke, and uh, a few, or some people smoke, uh, until they're very old and they, they die of something totally different. So what they're, they're doing when they say smoking kills is they're saying, well, what they should really say honestly is um, smoking is very dangerous. That is inductively true at a high level of prob probability. But what they found was that, you know, just in day-to-day -day life, if they said that, then lots of people continue to smoke and they're trying to deter people. So they make this comment, it's really comments based on fact. For those of us who've uh, followed uh, the law course, it's comment, it's just comment that smoking kills. It's not proved that it kills. But it's reasonable comment based on fact. Because if they smoke, if somebody says smoking kills and somebody says, oh no, it doesn't, it, you know, you can go and get into the discussion and then I'm sure that the, the people printing that health message, the government would, would, um, would have that discussion and say, you're quite right, we've gone too far with that. But what we're trying to tell you, get through your thick skull, everybody, is don't smoke. It's bad for you. Anyway, this is the method of science. Nothing is known for certain. It's certainly not known for certain that smoking kills you. It's just very likely that there's a link between the two. I don't know the latest statistical analysis on it, but it will vary depending on the size of the sample they're doing. Basically, the more people that they observe smoking, and the more people they observe having cancer, the more certain they will become. But they will never, 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 no scientist will ever say you'll be 100% certain. Nothing is known for certain in the method of science. Many things are known with a high level of inferred probability. And this is important in science, and it's important also in the criminal and civil law. Now, those of us who have done uh, the media law course will know that in a criminal case, the prosecution has to prove beyond reasonable doubt um, that a crime is committed. They, they, the prosecution doesn't have to prove beyond any doubt because the accusation that Fred killed John is a causal relationship that. Fred was caused to be killed by, by John, or John killed Fred. Causality. According to Hume, you can never pro pre prove that causality. That's presumably under the influence of, of, of Hume that, that's gone there into the law. That you know you can have reasonable doubt. Now, Hume's doubt is is reasonable doubt. Um, so according to Hume, at least, there can be no causal relationships such as John killed Fred that can be proved beyond all doubt. It could only be proved beyond reasonable doubt, which is to say at a high level of probability. And in practice, defence lawyers in criminal cases, defence criminal lawyers, they will attack, first of all, on the grounds that inference is taking place and that inference is never proof. In other words, 